bird brains out on the dyna today. First time I'm riding with the new wrap. God, doesn't it just look awesome? Ah! I love how it turned out. I, I never want to wrap a, a bike again in my life just because of how much freaking pain and misery that we went through. But man, the final product is so worth it. Right now I'm uh, headed out to uh, meet up with Johnny Roadblock. We're actually heading over to Men's Warehouse because uh, we got to go pick out what we are wearing for the wedding. Uh, the wedding isn't coming up until March, but uh, we like to have all of our ducks in a row here. So we're going to go pick out what we're wearing today and then we'll probably go and get fitted probably uh, mid to late December. That way everything is all taken care of. I definitely don't want to get fitted right now because I'm still dropping weight pretty quickly. I'm down to 229 pounds. That puts me at like 48 pounds total. Feeling great. Feeling awesome. Uh, loving the way I look. And uh, I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. Today we are going to talk about the wrap. Uh, what made me choose this color, what made me choose wrapping, the pros and cons, the process, how easy it was, yada, yada, yada. Uh, most of these topics were suggested by uh, the patrons. So shout out patrons for uh, giving me ideas for content. <laughs> So first off, we'll focus on the color. Why the gray? So when I initially thought about wrapping the bike, I was actually gonna go with a, uh, a pattern called Shadow Black. It's almost like a black a black and dark gray camo that uh, you can't really tell it's a pattern until you really look for it. Good God, how dirty is this road? And I really honestly should not even be riding right now. I went to the optometrist yesterday and they jacked around with my eye. Remember I was having those infections all the time and uh, she ah. with my eyelids so much that it's today it's just basically draining all the nastiness. It's really gross. I won't go into more details. But I also found out that I'm like very, not blind, but the, the vision in my right eye is significantly worse than my left eye. And uh, I actually got a prescription for glasses. Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's finally happened. But I don't get them for another two weeks or so. And with all the junk going into my left eye, it's making it all watery. So I'm basically relying off my right eye, which I'm now realizing is not as great as I thought it was. So <laughs> writing's probably not the best idea to be doing right now, but whatever. Anyways back to the uh, the wrap. I was actually gonna go with Shadow Black, which looks like this, which when you see it in a pattern and you see it on a swatch, it looks really cool. And I was really liking the way it looks, but then I saw it on a larger uh, scale, like on a, a car. I think it was, I'll just say this picture. And as you can see, you can see where the pattern is repeating. And I absolutely hate that in a wrap. Any sort of camo or anything like that, when you can see it repeating, uh, I can't stand that. So I decided against that. And then I weighed a couple other options. I, I, I did look at red uh, for a brief moment and then decided against it. It was just too boring. I actually put up a, a post on my Instagram that had three colors of red and I was hoping someone would comment saying that they made the, the connection. The swatches I had were to see which one closely or closest matched the Camaro. That was completely unrelated, but I put it up just to, to see if anyone would say, oh, you're matching, you're, you're gonna do it red because you put it on Instagram, but I didn't see anyone comment. Not a lot of people commented gray. Speaking of that, a lot of people said purple, which I did consider purple. They have a lot of good purple options uh, in wraps, but the red parts were was the killer. I'd have to completely redo all the red parts. And I just was not interested in doing that. So I needed something that would match with red. So my options were kind of limited to, you know, uh, base colors or any sort of red. Got rid of red, thought that was too boring. Uh, looked at some, I looked at a lot of grays uh, before I finally settled on this Avery. Uh, by the way, this is called dark, uh, matte dark gray, I believe is the official uh, word or name for this color. Uh, I originally looked at Battleship Gray from 3M, but as I talked about on the video, just a couple shades too light, especially when you put it on a bigger 
a bigger medium. But uh, I did want to give a shout out to fellers.com. Uh, they are nationwide, they're not just San Antonio based, but they do have an office in San Antonio. And I went down to, uh, to talk to them and the guy working there was super cool, very helpful. So shout out to fellers. If you do want to do any sort of wrapping projects uh, of your own, uh, I would highly suggest going through them. They have pretty much every color you can imagine at one of the, uh, the cheapest prices out there. So speaking of price, one question that someone asked is how much did it cost to wrap the bike myself versus taking it to someone to wrap it? Now I don't have exact figures, uh, but for me it was $130 for the vinyl alone. Now of course I already had the heat gun, I already had the squeegees, I already had the knifeless tape, I had everything else that I needed. So my costs to wrap the bike were very minimal, about $130. Now to take it to get get it wrapped by somebody that's going to vary greatly depending on who you take it to now I do believe I've gotten quotes before on the bike I I honestly can't remember but I want to say it was between about 750 and a thousand dollars so you're talking seven to eight or seven to ten times more than uh, the vinyl cost alone now you might ask yourself well what do you get with that over taking it to somebody now I'm not gonna lie I am NOT a professional rapper I am far 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 from it and it did take me about 18 hours to complete the uh, the job that's a long time a lot of a lot of man hours went into this job now granted if I were to take it to someone to rap they might have me tear down the bike uh, myself Let's see where, oh, no, never mind. I was gonna say, let's see where Wagon Road goes, but it, it goes right there. My bike is heating up quick. <sighs> yeah, I gotta get moving. This is not gonna work. Anyways, back to the topic at hand. Um, if you do spend that money to have someone professionally do it, you are going to get a better job, a better quality wrap. Uh, but they're gonna use the same materials. They're either gonna use Avery or 3M if you go to anyone reputable. Uh, so, I mean, the materials are probably gonna be the same, but the overall uh, durability and everything of that of the job is probably going to be better. The way I looked at this job is I would like it to last until it's paid off. So about a year and a half, two years. I'm pretty confident that uh, the the job that we did is going to hold up for that long. Now, a lot of a lot of people usually ask is, uh, how does the vinyl hold up with the heat of the motor, especially on the other side of the tank? Uh, honestly, I I don't know. I've I looked did some research on the internet, and I I saw people going both ways. It was literally a 50/50 split. Some people said they'd had it on for years and never had an issue. Some people said they had it on for weeks and it started bubbling. So I, I'm sure a lot of that has to do with installation as well as material. So I use top-notch material. My installation eh, was the best I could do. So we'll see. To me, it was a $130 gamble that I was willing to take. I saw had somebody ask, why go with uh, with wrap as opposed to other methods such as paint or powder coat? And that simply comes down to price and doability. So. What I mean by price, of course, is that $130 to wrap this bike is fairly cheap. If I was to paint this bike and paint, if I was to do a matte gray paint job on all the pieces that I wrapped, you're probably looking at at least a grand. I would say probably closer to two. Uh, I've never done research on matte paint, but generally I, I know the general rule of thumb is they do run more expensive uh, because of the process. They have to heat it differently or bake it differently, something like that. So cost was a huge factor on paint. Now powder coat, it would be cheaper to powder coat uh, and it would be more durable than paint, but you're still looking at about $200 for the fenders and that's pretty much all you can do. Now, I know the older tanks had a, the older gas tanks had a lining which made it to where you could not powder coat tanks. Now, I was trying to do some research and I wasn't able to find a definitive answer as to if you can powder coat tanks or not. And if you do, do you have to get them relined? Cause that's a whole nother step, a whole nother process, a whole nother expense that you have to factor into the whole uh, process. So 
unsure on that and you for sure can't powder coat the fairing because it's plastic you can only powder coat metal uh, so the doability which just wasn't there to do what I wanted to do with uh, powder coat now of course you can powder coat with the metal parts and try to wrap the uh, the non metal parts but that brings you into color matching and it might not be exactly the same and I'm kind of OCD on that so I would like everything to to match as closely as possible and then on top of that uh, turnaround time is of course higher with either of those processes as it is opposed to wrapping if you do it yourself and you do it in a timely manner now of course if you were to take it to someone to wrap you're probably looking at a week to two weeks minimum uh, but if you do it yourself we knocked it out in two days about 18 hours total granted we did kind of know what we were doing especially with the uh, the taking apart of the bike so uh, if you're a little bit newer to that whole process it might take you a little bit longer but uh, probably even even being completely new you'd probably still be able to do it under a week oh man this bike looks good <laughs> I really just don't think that the color of this bike translates on camera as well as it does in person. Uh. So far, nothing, uh, nothing seems to be peeling or bubbling, so that's a good sign. We got some rough edges right here, but that's just going to be, that's just from the stretching of the installation. Yeah, overall still looks good. Fired right up. So overall, I would say that uh, wrapping the bike was definitely a good choice. I'm definitely happy with my decision. I'm happy with the color. Uh, I'm happy with pretty much everything. It was definitely a learning experience. It also gave me some practice to uh, if and when I ever wrap a car, what to expect. I honestly feel like a car would be easier to wrap than a motorcycle just because of the the curves are so much bigger. Uh, it's not as intricate. The only pieces that I think I'd have trouble with currently right now would be the bumpers, especially on a car like the Camaro when you have the grill and everything like that. But I still feel like I could do it if I absolutely had to. Well guys, that's going to do it for today's episode. If you uh, if you have any questions about the wrap, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below and I'll get to them as soon as I possibly can. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you haven't already, go ahead and punch that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.